All right, testing, testing, one, two, three. I want to thank everybody for coming out to the Springboro Tea Party's reaffirmation of the Bill of Rights rally. This has been in planning for a little while, and uh, we've been putting a lot of time and effort into it, and every last penny we could to try to get this bad boy to happen. So if anybody has good favor with the man upstairs, say a little prayer, and uh, hopefully we have clear skies throughout the whole event. Last on my list today, it's something I'm very much looking forward to hear and speak. We actually uh, worked with Hannah during the election cycle last time, going door to door, basically to uh, give out information about why, you know, not to vote for Obama for simple fact of principle. Not necessarily endorsing any type of candidate or anything like that, but just showing a referendum on that particular candidate's uh, record and everything else. It's no different than any other group would do, and basically simply stated that hey, this is what this guy's done, this is what he pledged to do, and obviously the pros don't match a con list. No endorsements of any candidates of any kind, just simply holding this person to the grind. And that's one of the things I really respect about Americans for Prosperity. They are a diehard uh, conservative group that basically goes and asks hardcore questions and asks candidates, you know, where do you stand on these issues? They don't have to endorse anybody. Just get a microphone in their face and say, where do you stand on this issue? Where do you stand on that issue? Because the American people have a right to know. Because our, our ballot is, it, it, we vote with our ballots and we vote with our dollar. And we don't like something we don't, see something we don't like, we basically take it somewhere else. In this case, instead of turning, we vote for John Anderson. You know? You don't like what the company that's going for GMOs, whatever, you go put your dollar somewhere else. And lastly, before I introduce Anna, uh, Hannah, <clears throat> there's an app that I read about that you can get on your smartphones called Bicot, B-U-I-C-O-T-T, -T, where you can basically scan the universal barcode that's on the back and it'll show you who the parent company is that post toasties that you're going to buy. And if you don't like where the money's going, you don't buy it. Prime example, I used to have progressive insurance. There's a reason why it's called that. They raise your rates up dramatically and then they funnel that money to moveon.org and other Soros-funded projects. Exactly. So, well, actually, the progressive insurance was actually found by someone else, but when his son got it over, they, they turned it into a radical left thing. But I got tired of that. I went to a local insurance dealer here at Neil Martin, found me a really great insurance plan for a third of the price, covers both my vehicles for a year. I'm like, heck, yes. So do window shopping, find out what's going on out there, buy local, and do everything else. Up next is Hannah Faulkner. She's from uh, Americans for Prosperity of Ohio. She's the Southwest Ohio uh, coordinator, and she's got some pretty good uh, points of interest, I'm sure, that you're definitely going to want to get your notepads out and write down these great links, too, and other things she just suggests. Hannah, come on up. I'm short, so I'm going to move it. All right, guys. Well, thank you, first of all, for being here. I like to be pulling up the rear. So I appreciate all you guys sticking around and listening to what we have to say today. You know, this rally is exactly what America is all about. Free speech, share of ideas, share of what you believe with other people. It doesn't matter if no one else agrees with you. You have the right to share. And I hope that all of you take everything you've heard today and you take it out of this room and you share it with other people because we're not doing anything by just keeping it here, by keeping it at the park today. We've got to take it out and we've got to spread the word because that's the only way we're going to make a difference. So I want you guys to remember that as you're going on. Uh, like Sunny said, my name is Hannah Faulkner. I'm with Americans for Prosperity here in Ohio. I'm the Southwest Ohio Field Coordinator, so I range from Cincinnati up to Dayton. For those of you who aren't familiar with Americans for Prosperity, we're a nonprofit organization and we focus on educating citizens about economic policy and then mobilizing those citizens as advocates in the public public policy process. We're an organization of grassroots leaders, like yourselves, who engage citizens in the name of limited government, free markets, all at the local, state, and federal levels. AFP supports cutting taxes and government spending in order to halt the encroachment of government and the economic lives of all citizens. We do this by fighting proposed tax increases and pointing out evidence of waste, fraud, and abuse. We couldn't be successful doing any of this without our citizen activists. We have over 2.3 million, million activists in the whole country, and in the great state of Ohio, we have 92,000. 
The activists here in Ohio have been working very hard in the past few months. You know, Sonny said he worked with us last year exposing Obama's failed policies. We had a Obama's failing agenda tour that went all across the United States to expose those policies because we never endorse candidates. We only endorse issues because candidates will always let you down. There's always going to be something down the road. Like John Anderson had to say, you know, there's always something that they're searching and he may say that he's a true guy, and I believe him, but most of them up there aren't. They don't stick to their word. <laughs> and so you have to just endorse the issues because you never know. He said when they're there way too long, they get into things. People offer them money. They take it. So we have to make sure that we're sticking them to the issues and we're constantly pinning them to the floor, to the table, on everything. We have to keep them true to the conservative values. Some issues that we've been working on here in the state of Ohio, specifically the travel tax, which we had a great success on this past week. They took it out of the budget, so that's a great success that we're proud of. Our 92,000 activists here in the state making phone calls to their state legislators about that, so it's out of the budget. Right to work is something that we're still actively working on. I know a lot of you guys heard them talk earlier about right to work and how important it is to the state. School choice is another one that we're big proponents of and also against Common Core and everything that it's going to do the, to the state of Ohio and other states throughout the nation. And the severance tax, we've been a big proponent against that here in the state of Ohio. We feel like it's going to hurt the businesses up specifically up north in the state. But probably the most important one that we've been working on, and the one I want to talk to you guys about today, is Medicaid expansion. So for those of you, most of you here are probably familiar with it, but some of you on TV may not know, Medicaid expansion, it's something that came from the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. It's a process in which states can choose to expand those who are covered through their Medicaid in their state to all individuals below 133% of the federal poverty level. If a state chooses to do this, the federal government will pick up the bill for those newly added to the Medicaid for the first three years. But after that, they'll cover up to 90% of the costs past 2020. As of now, Medicaid is a shared expense of both the state and the federal government. The Fed's paying close to 57 cents for every dollar that's put out. However, Medicaid is still the single largest item in states' budgets, and it's usually about 22%, which is even greater than K-12 through education. So for you, the taxpayer, what does Medicaid expansion really mean? Well, it means approximately 17 million people are going to be added to the Medicaid system, which in the end is going to add $465 million to our tax bill. The appealing thing about Medicaid expansion to the state governments is that it's virtually free or low cost, right? What's so bad about that? Well, we all know even if we're not paying for it out of our state budget, it's coming from somewhere. Money doesn't fall from the sky. We all pay our federal taxes, and the federal government is going to have to fit this bill. Not to mention, when the states give in to receive this federal funding, they're also at the mercy of the rules and mandates that Washington sends down. It takes the power away from the state governments once again and gives the federal government the big hand at making decisions. So the question is whether to expand an already broken and costly system. Is it really the best option for a country sitting on piles of debt? Yeah, I don't think so either. <laughs> so back, so what can you guys do to help stop Medicaid expansion? First of all, it goes back to what I spoke to earlier. You want to educate yourself first. That's what AFP is about. We're about educating those citizens out there about the issues. You can do that in several different ways. I have some forms for you if you guys like those. Our website has little two-pagers on almost every topic, including Medicaid expansion. Um, they're called Need to Knows, and they're great for educating yourself, and they're all referenced. So where the information comes from is referenced at the bottom of the sheet. You can check our facts. They're right. I also encourage you, after you educate yourself, you have to do more. You have to go out and spread the word. You can't just keep it to yourself. Go tell your friends, your neighbors, 
even those you find on the street. Um, I once knew a lady who came in and said she would take papers like that and leave it at the doctor's office for people to read. People were always looking for something to read at the doctor's office. So I thought that was an interesting way to spread the word. After you do that, you need to be active in calling your state representatives and call Governor Kasich. Call him on a daily basis. Send him emails. Uh, blow up his phone lines because he needs to know what you think about this. He needs to know he's representing you and your needs. Just make sure he knows how you feel about Medicaid expansion and what's going to do. I will. <laughs> well, I hope that you do. It, it's just I can't express to you guys how vitally important it is that we become citizens that don't just sit and complain. We become citizens that go out and make a difference. We have to do it. There's no option. There's no option anymore to sit on the sideline. We're all players in this game. We have to do it, not only for ourselves, for our families, and for our country. Thanks, guys.
I'm not gonna make 